Well, welcome to another edition of the Buyer's Guide. It's mid-November, so it's the perfect time to start looking at some more winter-orientated ground bait mixers. In this video, we are going to be looking at another of one of the most popular brands that we've looked at within this series, and that's a Boland mix. And they come in five kilo bags. It's the all-round black. The Boland range of ground baits have caused a bit of a stir to be honest as regards the comments that have been featured within this channel and within this series and that's just purely because so many people weren't actually aware of this actual range of ground baits. Now it's a Polish range of ground baits but they've been readily available right here in the UK for a number of years now and in certain areas of the country they have become a really really popular mix. Now the mixes that I've featured so far in this series have really been cereal based mixers so the Boland mixers that I've had access to have all been cereal, cereal mixers so they haven't been fish meal mixers now this particular one is as the name suggests it's an all round black ground bait alright and they come in monster 5 kilo bags and one of the key features to this range of ground baits is that a lot of people have seen that the actual cost of the ground baits has worked out really really economical and that's why lots of anglers use these types of mixers when they're heading off to festivals in Ireland and places like that because obviously they're the venues where you tend to use quite a bit of ground bait certainly if you're going there for a week or so so by using either this mix on its own or these sorts of mixes on their own or just kind of cutting them with a little bit with brown crumb and that sort of thing can really bulk out your ground baits and when you consider that bags of ground bait like this um, are only a fraction of the price of some other brands then I can see why they've been so popular and they have been great mixers anyway now this particular mix is the all round black and as the name suggests it's a very dark mix okay so it's what we call a, a it's a black mix basically and they're the kind of mixes that we're looking at now now we're getting towards the end of autumn uh, and, and heading into winter when a lot of the water clarity on the venues that we're fishing is much much clearer and you know it's been proven time and time again that darker mixes usually are the way to go in winter to help you catch more fish and these types of mixes are ideal now I'm actually going to be out fishing with this particular mix this weekend so if you don't want to miss that out on that video don't forget to hit subscribe so I will be out doing a session video with this actual mix all right now on the packaging itself which is something we always have a look at because lots of packaging can give you an idea of what the mix is like obviously it's got the bowl and logo on there and it is a Polish ground bait so hence the Polish text that's on there you've got the English label on there all round black and then we've got a nice window in the packaging which is showing you how dark it is and there are flecks of, of feed in there but it does look quite a fine mix um, I'm imagining there might be bits of hemp in there so it could be quite active but we'll find that out in a moment when we start mixing it we've got a picture of a bream on there so it's telling us it's um, you know very much an all-round mix there's a carp on there as well and then there's quite a bit of text on the back there but there is one section here in English which I know most of you are English um, in fast running waters or deeper than four meters add Boland glue or clay to gravel to help the ground bait to make it heavier so it's just giving you an idea of um, how you could actually use the mix depending on the type of venue that you're going to be fishing in order to increase the quality of the mixture use Boland aroma and flavor additives so it's telling you that there are uh, additives in the range as well all right so it's a cereal based mix I'll just have a look at the rest of the packaging on here there is some mixing instructions on there which I'm a fan of, I mean I'm assuming that I haven't seen all mixing instructions on bags of ground bait but the ones I have seen have generally been good advice so I'm always in favour of anything like that I can't really see any dates on there but I know from the other, the other mixers in the range there's at least a couple of years shelf life on these ground baits anyway so you know that's one thing that you need to bear in mind because if you are buying ground baits in bulk as it were certainly in that sort of size a lot of these ground baits you can get mail order or you can get them sent to you in bulk if you want to make it even more economical to cover the cost of carriage and all that sort of thing then you do obviously need to think about how long they're going to last because if you're going to order a bulk load of ground bait then you don't want to find that you've got to use it within a couple of weeks you know you, it, if you've got the option of keeping it several months and it's still going to be okay then that's obviously good value for money again 
So, we've looked at the packaging, you can see it's a really dark mix. What I'm going to do now is mix it up and that's just going to give us an idea of how active it is, what the kind of smells are involved, how it binds. And it's also going to show us, which I think is a very important feature that a lot of people spoke to me about, is whether any of this black dye that's actually in the mix actually comes off on your fingers. Um, or if it comes onto the onto the ground bait bowl itself because you know there are mixes out there that sometimes if you add uh, anything dark to the mix to darken it down it just washes out as soon as it goes into the water but that's something we're going to find out right now so this is a five kilo bag i'm not going to mix all five kilos as you can imagine i've obviously got quite a lot to use at the weekend because i'm going to be out fishing with this so let's just whack this in the bowl and mix enough so it's going to give us a good idea of what it's like as you can see there's a bit of feed in there And I think some of that will swell up. I think when it's when we've added water to it, the water will um, soak into these bits of feed and, and make them swell up more, which will make them obviously a little bit more obvious. But as you can see, it's a lovely dark mix. And there is a bit of feed in there. You know, I wouldn't call that a really fine mix. So this is the kind of mix that I would tend to use on a, um, I mean, from what I know about it and what I've seen so far is that I use it when we're fishing natural venues, natural reservoirs, rivers, when you're fishing for roach and bream when you're not wanting fish meal involved but i think this might be a good roach mix as well you know if possibly we can mix it dry that's something we'll try but we'll also try wetting in it as well dampening it down to see if it can be a bit more inert so let's get some water in i'm just going to add it a little bit at a time just to give it give us a good idea of what it's like now that's that's kicked up the smell more as it always does when you add water to mixes and it is gone, you know, it's gone darker as well anyway, which is something that we know about. When you add water to mixers, it usually darkens them down. Now what I can feel on my fingers already is that it's a not it's not a sticky mix. Now you get some mixers that are really, really sticky, and you can it you know, you almost have to scrape it off your hands when you've mixed it. They're really, really kind of oily. I'm sure you've witnessed that. Well it doesn't feel like this is that sort of mix. But yeah, that's really kicked up the smell now. And I'm not going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it quite quite on the dry side to start with because it'll be interesting to see how active it could actually be. We'll try that in the tank in a moment. But then I will also dampen a, part, a portion of it down so that it's more realistic as to how we would normally be fishing it if you're packing it in a feeder and that sort of thing. And it'll be interesting to see if it will go quite inert by uh, adding more water to one bit. And we can see how that reacts in the, uh, in the tank. Now as you can see the bowl... It's gone a little bit darker, but that just could be because it's damp. But the dye hasn't come out. The dye is still within the mix, which I'm a massive, you know, I'm a massive fan of. Now, as you can see, there is actually a bit of stickiness there. You can probably, you can probably just see it boiling up a little bit. So there is a bit of stickiness there, which means it's going to be great for binding. And one thing I've noticed with these mixes so far is that they are quite kind of, uh, whilst they are, have all been cereal mixes that I've used. They've, they've all been quite flexible in the way that you can use them. You know, some ground baits don't bowl, uh, bind very well. You know, if you're going to feed them on a pole in bowls of ground bait, then some of them are too dry to do that. The balls just break up or you certainly couldn't feed them in deep water. But these mixes have been quite all round mixes. So you can have them dry if you're putting in a feeder. Or if you want to mix them like I have done now, where you might want to feed them in bowls of ground bait and that sort of thing, which is obviously quite a common method in on lots of natural venues like in Ireland and that you know you are feeding bowls of ground bait on a pole line or sometimes a bomb on ball or sometimes even on a waggler. So if you can do all that with one mix and then that just means it's it's very versatile which is great. Now I'm not gonna add any more water to that. So as you can see there's a little bit of darkness come off on my fingers now but it's not it's not that oily stickiness that you get. You know I am look there's nothing there that I've kind of got to, got to scrape off like you do with some oily mixes. So that's great, I like that. And But there is quite a bit of feed in there, which has surprised me actually. It's quite, you know, it's one of those things that when you see the mix through the window of the packaging, because that's dry, then it's not kind of expanded to its maximum, like it will do when you've added water. When you add water, it soaks, the mix soaks the water in and it expands. And that's why sometimes you think there's no feed in something. And when you mix it up, or certainly when you put it on a riddle, you know it's amazing how much there is actually in there so it's just something that you need to uh, be aware of and that's exactly what this series is all about because you know if there is feed in a mix and you're going to be using it in the winter months when you don't really want to be feeding much then you might not want to select this mix and pick another one in the range or you can just simply put this on a sieve and sieve out a lot of those particles 
it's up to you how you do it people, some people do that i'm not a big fan of that i'll be absolutely honest with you so i like to leave a mix how it is because when you're sieving things off you, you you're changing the mix you're taking things out of it so it's kind of well why are you using that mix if you're going to change it so it's one of them but that's very much a personal thing so what i'm going to do is just like i do with every single ground bait in this series is i'm going to leave this exactly 20 minutes and then i'm going to come back to it see how it binds see if we can add any more water to a portion of it and some of it i'm going to leave dry and then we're going to get it in the tank and see how it performs underwater that's been exactly 20 minutes um usually i'd leave it longer than that in matches you know if i'm going to mix the ground out on the morning then i mix it as soon as i get to my peg so usually you've got about an hour at least to set up on matches so the mixes I use on the bank have usually had at least an hour, but I'll openly admit most of the time now I'm mixing my ground bait the night before, so it obviously has much more time to, to rest. But this is 20 minutes. Every ground bait we've used has been 20 minutes, so we've got to keep that benchmark the same. So as you can see, it's dried out a little bit. I haven't added any more water to it, but what I am going to do is, if I portion off that bit there, I'm going to leave that exactly how it is now. And then this bit here, I'm just going to see if it'll take some more water so we can try that out in the tank to see if it does go inert and, and, and reacts different from this mix over here. Uh, but I'm also going to try and overwet it as well to, just to see if we can make some sort of a slop out of it. Just to see, how, you know, does it actually um, just clump up into a ball like a paste or whether it does allow you to overwet it. Now, it feels like, you know, you're going to be able to overwet this fine. I mean, I know a lot of lads use this kind of mix um, when they're fishing with whips and that sort of thing and they're fishing with um, sloppy ground bait, but I don't know, but that's fine. What I've done there is I've added extra uh, water to that bit there, as you can see, hence that's why that's darker than that over there. That's the how it was after the 20 minutes. But what I'm going to do here is that is what I'm going to try in the feeder for you, just to see how it performs under the water. But then this bit here, let's just see if we can overwet it. Looks like we can. Yeah, that's no problem. And what I'll do is at the end of the uh, the tank test, when I when I put those two mixers in the um, in the tank, I'll also put this wet in, just so you can see what kind of a wet wet uh, slop cloud is created with that. But yeah, I can see that's. I mean, you could feed that in sloppy balls of ground bait. So that's good. So again, it's another versatile mix, which is brilliant. You know, I think that's great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these in a cage feeder and we're going to see how they perform under the water and as you can see you know none of that um stickiness or the dyes come off that's just wetness so that's good so let's see what, how it's going to perform in the tank as with every video in this series i've used the same feeder every time and that's quite simply a it's about a six hole um slim wire cage feeder all right it's just a side weighted feeder and the reason why i've used that obviously i've used the same feeder in every video in this series but i've done that obviously for uniformity but it's obviously a nice um slim wire mesh feeder that the water can get to the ground bit really quickly just so that'll give us an idea of how it's going to perform so what i'll do is i'm going to go in with the inert mix or the one that's slightly over wet first just so we can see how that's going to perform under the water and I'm packing this in medium consistency, just like I've done before. And I've packed that in as though I was going to cast probably 50 metres. All right, 50 metres. Um, I haven't packed it in too tight. But like I said, this is the wetter of the portion of the mix. So let's see how this will perform once it's in the tank. Well, that surprised me like I say there are some particles coming to the top which I'll show you in a moment they look like bits of bits of hemp I don't know if they're hemp in there but they are coming off it and like I said this is only, only had 20 minutes so normally in a real life scenario which is something that I will be fishing with at the weekend in the future video this mix will have had a more time to to rest there certainly isn't any sort of a cloud there's a little bit of a haze right down at the bottom where it's resting on on the bottom of the tank a little bit of haze um i don't know if really that some of that is just coming out of the bit of the the coloring that's in the ground bait that you know the dark dye i don't know but it's certainly not coming up off the feeder now there are quite a few particles coming off that and that's like something that uh, you know i expected you know at the beginning i said this probably could be a good roach mix as well but this has proved that the actual ground bait that's in the feeder most of it is just kind of melting away it's quite inert 
So I think with this mix, if you was to mix it, say the night before, or to give it a couple of hours, the over-wetted portion, I think that would be completely different. There wouldn't be as much dry stuff coming off the feeder. However, the next bit that we're going to try is I'm going to try it with the dry mix because I think that dry mix could be a very good um, active way of, uh, or active mix to use like for roach, for perch, hybrids as well, uh, in, in its dry state. But I think just the way that, that, I mean, look at that ground bait now. I mean, obviously that's only been in there a minute and I don't think there's anything, well, there's virtually nothing coming off that now. So even though that's only had 20 minutes to rest, you know, after a minute and there's nothing else coming off it. So as you can see that now, the way that that's fishing right now is almost like a big fish, almost bream kind of way of fishing it. In fact, the feed is still, the majority, the vast majority of the ground bait is still in the feeder. And <laughs> I'll be absolutely honest and say that I don't think it's gonna come out the way that it is right now, which has really surprised me. I don't think that that's gonna come out now. I, I, I think it's all broken down and I think as soon as I lift that feeder up, that will just empty perfectly, which is what we want in some scenarios. But that, that certainly, it's um, it's really slow breakdown, so that's interesting. But like I said, that was the, the wetter portion of the mix. So what I'm gonna do now is take this out, um, this should empty perfectly, I'm sure it will. I'm sure all the feed will come out of the feeder. And we'll just have a look what kind of a cloud and stuff comes off this, just by bringing the feeder out of the tank, all right? There we go, so it's emptied how I thought. Everything's come out of that and it's kicked up a lovely dark cloud. I mean, look at that. I mean, and that's what we talk about. I mean, that really, that is enough to draw several fish into your peg and there's no feed in that. And that's something that we talked about in lots of videos where sometimes just the ground bait itself is enough to draw fish in or keep fish in your peg, just on the attraction of the ground bait. Just look at that, and it's still clouded up now, and that was just bringing, uh, bringing the feeder out. Very interesting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try the same thing again now, but with the dry mix, all right? So again, I'm gonna pack it in at the same consistency, as I was gonna cast it 50 meters. And I think there'll be quite a bit coming off this, because like I said, this is drier, and I'll just put this to the right hand side of the shot. I know it's still a little bit cloudy in there, but, will give us a good idea of how, there we go, let's put it to that side. And I think there'll be a lot more coming off that, probably for longer as well. I mean, last time, yes, there was stuff coming on it, off it, but it was only coming off it for about a minute, tops. I think this will come off it much, much more. I know it's still a little bit cloudy in there, obviously from the previous feeder, but, and I've got to admit, that's nowhere near as active as I thought. On appearances, this looked like it was gonna be quite an active mix. And, that's nowhere near as active as what I thought. And you know, looking back on the actual packaging, I haven't researched this in any way with the with the people at Boland on purpose because I, I wanted to have a, an unbiased opinion on what I've mixed here. And the only two fish that are on the front of that packaging are a bream and a carp. All right, I think it's a carp. Yeah, it's a carp. It's not a carassia. It's a carp. And that might be exactly what we're seeing. I thought this was going to be a more active roachy type mix, um, but there's a carp and a bream on the, on the front, and that probably reflects what we're looking at now. In fact, if you have a look at that, that, that dry mix has actually stayed in the feeder just as long, if not more than the wet mix, which is even more interesting to me because I thought, because that's dry, it would have been fizzing off, therefore emptying quicker, but it's not. I mean, that, to be honest, that's, that's probably breaking down about the same, if not slightly slower than the wet mix. So by over wetting that mix, what we've actually done is kind of um, increase the breakdown rate, which is, I think it's very interesting because some mixes, when you put a bit more water to them, they kind of stick and bind more, you know, like a paste, but that's not the case with this. That feed is almost still intact. It's been in there over a minute now. That's incredible. What I'm gonna do is, obviously I could keep filming on that, but I wanna take it out. I wanna see how it empties. I think it'll still empty okay when I lift the feeder out, and then I'm going to have a look at what uh, um, what the actual uh, slop, what the you know the overwetted ground bait, what kind of a cloud comes off that. So let's get this feeder out. Yep, yeah, it's emptied perfectly again, and another great big cloud coming off it. You can see the particles in there, but I thought those particles, having had only 20 minutes to soak wouldn't be, um, I, I thought they would be really active and coming off the, off the feeder, but obviously not. Now I don't know what those ingredients are, and they're obviously not really buoyant ingredients, you know, the ones, yes, there's quite a bit of uh, feed on the top of the tank now, but there's a lot more down on the bottom, you know, which has surprised me. 
So there you go, still a nice cloud, and that's just too... I mean, look at the attraction there. If that was your swim now, just look at the attraction there. And you haven't fed anything. You've only put two feeder fulls of ground bait in. Incredible. Right, we've got the uh, the slop here, so let's drop the slop in. Just to see if whether this goes straight down in a clump or whether it actually or whether it actually clouds up straight from the surface. <laughs> straight down. <laughs> straight down. So even when it's overwetted, it's not like a surface mix that when it's overwet it explodes on the surface and then falls down and out. It's not done that. It's gone straight down as, as, a, as a wet ball, straight to the bottom. And the only bit that's kicked up off the bottom is the bit that was already in there from the previous two previous two feeder fulls. Very interesting. Now, like I say, this is a Polish ground bait mix, and I can see why it's been so popular. Certainly on those sorts of natural venues, like the lads, you know, with the lads that go over in Ireland and fish a lot of the natural reservoirs. Underneath, I've put the details of the rep for you. It's David Watson. His telephone number is there, and they do also have a Facebook page if you want to learn more about their mixes and how to get hold of them. Dave can actually ship out these mixes to you wherever you are and if you visit the Facebook page there or give him a call or text him I'm sure he'll be able to send you more information and prices about the range. Now the bit that I know a lot of you are going to want to know is how much does a bag of ground bait cost that weighs 5 kilos? Well you're probably going to be surprised to hear that with this being such a quality mix you'd be amazed to hear that that bag of ground bait is £8 incredible value for, for for money you know and, and I can see why it's so popular in certain parts of the country if you're fishing those sorts of venues you know there aren't many venues um, in certain parts of the country that require cereal based mixers just purely because the trend is for fishing commercials so they're using fish meal mixers but if you're out there using um, cereal based mixers then this is one that I'm really looking forward to trying at the weekend I'm going to be out there feeder fishing with this mix I'm going to be using it on its own so if you don't want to miss out on that don't forget to hit subscribe. So I hope you've enjoyed this insight into yet another ground bait mix. I've got literally dozens more mixes to go through and to show you from different brands. And if you don't want to miss that session video at the weekend and you don't want to miss any more of the series, don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos, then have a look at our membership channel, Patreon TV, just there. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.